for the introduction. And uh, today I'm going to talk about the a more efficient sampling design, which will save you a lot of sample size and uh, which eventually save you a cost. And we all know from the previous speakers that the cost of a clinical trial or the medical device trials are expensive. So we want to save sample size um, by using a more better efficient design. And uh, today I will use the area under the ROC curve, which is the most popular summary index in the medical diagnostic ROC analysis and for, to, to illustrate the use of the rank set sampling and to improve the, any clinical trial study or other preclinical trial studies. Okay, so um, first I will give you a brief introduction about what is a ROC analysis in the medical diagnostic <laughs> test. Um, and uh, in the medical diagnostic, the, our objective is to identify the disease subject from the, uh, the general population through some biomarker measurements or through some imaging devices. And um, here, if we have a continuous biomarker, then we can actually use the ROC curve for the evaluation of the biomarker accuracy. And, uh, uh, so suppose our, uh, we assume that the disease subject have a larger biomarker, and if that is not the case, then a transformation of these values, initial values, is needed. If you're like, you know, for the HIV patient, uh, your biomarker is actually, your CD4 count is lower than the, than the normal general population. So in that case, then you maybe want to have a reciprocal of these Values, initial values before you using uh, applying any ROC analysis. So, but, but for generally speaking, we assume that the disease subject have larger biomarker values, and uh, if then we need to classify these continuous biomarkers into two groups for our making our diagnosis, and uh, we have a threshold value C, and that threshold will be become our diagnostic cut point. And uh, for example, if the biomarker is greater than a C, then we denote as diseased, and um, otherwise healthy. And uh, so and then we can draw a two by two table. Um, the, the, on the column is the true reality, which we know these, these individuals are either from the diseased population or the healthy population. And the, on the row, we have the diagnosis outcome so where we can define as disease or healthy. Then on the diagonal with these smiley faces are the cases that we correctly identify these individuals. So, and for the red ones, for example, under the healthy, the reality is a healthy individual, but we falsely diagnosed into the disease group. Then it's a false positive. And likely here is we incorrectly identify a disease patient to be a healthy, so it's a false negative. And uh, here is the two distribution, the density plot, and we can see that the vertical line here is a cut point. And this yellow shaded area is the, and the chubby curve is representing the healthy, uh, the disease, and, uh, and the, 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 the slim one representing the healthy. So usually the disease is greater than the healthy. And uh, we can see that under the disease population, if the value is greater than the cut point, we identify as disease group. So this is uh, sensitivity, which is a correct case under the disease population. Likewise, this is the correct case under the healthy population, and this is called specificity. And we also have false negative and false positive. Okay, and um, there are many choices. We can draw the diagonal on the vertical line here, here, anywhere. So the, the choice of the threshold value um, actually depends on the relative cost of our sensitivity, uh, the false positive and the false negative. Suppose we have a very invasive pr procedure after our diagnosis, then we really want a high specificity. We don't want to put a healthy individual into a surgery. 
right? And, uh, and how, however, for some of type of diseases, we actually want a high sensitivity, like cervical cancer, because for cervical cancer, we don't want to lose anyone, because this is the only cancer that is preventable. Uh, yeah, you correct me if I'm wrong. I'm not the, a clinical expert, but I, as far as I know, I think cervical cancer is uh, the only one that is really preventable. And uh, for, the, for these different, dif different cut off points, these different cut points, we can actually, for each cut point, we can have a sensitivity and specificity. Then we plot all of these uh, sensitivity and specific specificity in pairs and uh, across all the threshold. Then we're forming an RC plot. And uh, this is the uh, two example. Here we have the disease population, healthy population, and the blue one and the green one are the two selection of cut points. And uh, these are representing the two dots here. And uh, so if we have three biomarkers, and we can see that the RLC curve, uh, the, the, these are the, their corresponding RLC curves. And we can see that uh, the black one representing the healthy population, the green one representing the disease population. For biomarker one, we can see that the, they are more spreading, separating from the disease and healthy. Then the RLC curve is more, tends to be more closer to 0.10. And this is a excellent biomarker compared among the three. And, um, and if our, our disease population is closer to the healthy population, then this RLC curve is represented by the red curve. Finally, if our two disease population is absolutely overlap, like the black one, if the disease and healthy are both black curves, they are completely nothing different then this is a worthless biomarker, which represented by a diagonal line. So if a LC curve looks like this, then that means there's no, absolutely no differentiate ability for this biomarker. And then, and uh, however, this, this LC curve is uh, like a tutorial, the 101 case. But in real life, the LC curve sometimes flips and, uh, and overlaps from each other. So how we can choose these biomarkers from, from the overlapped or some crossed RLC curves? We use the summary in the index instead of observing the whole RLC curve because it's hard to, to compare through the whole RLC curve. And the, the two popular ones are the area under the RLC curve and the partial area. And then for, the whole, for the whole range of the threshold value, we use the AUC. And here's the definition of AUC, which is the area under the other C curve by, by its name. And uh, how we calculate, so we know that calculate the area is by integration under that curve, right? So we just integration in the ROC curve with respect to the specificity. And the AUC can also be um, interpreted as a probability of the disease subject greater than the healthy subject. So the larger this probability, that means the larger our diagnostic accuracy is. And usually the AUC is greater than 0.8. We determine this is a good candidate for our future um, biomarker evaluation. And, um, and this is just a general introduction about the RLC analysis. Now I will propose the, our um, new sample design which is the rank set sample. And here I will give you a motivation example. Uh, he, this is a study of, uh, um, for the prostate cancer, and we know there are many biomarkers for that, and I will take uh, FPSA as an example. And we know that usually for individual diagnostic tests, they co it costs, uh, and also it takes time to, to get a result. And, um, how about we do not measure this initially? Instead, we use some covariate to select these ranked set samples. Then we can, we can based on these ranked set samples, then we measure this. And uh, because the ranked set sample is a more representative sample of the population, 
rather than a simple random sampling. Then we, we will, this new design will result into a study of smaller sample size with equal efficiency of any estimation or your confidence interval or your hypothesis testing. So this is the design. So suppose we have age, we choose age as our covert value for ranking. And we know age, age is a matching variable for the disease and the healthy. So it's using this value will get our, will obtain a more representative sample for both population. And also age is closely associated with our biomarker value. So using age to, as a surrogate for the, this biomarker will save out us a lot of time and also money. And um, oh yeah, I just said that a second. Okay, so uh, as I'm a statistician, uh, I work at the, as a faculty in the biostatistic department. A lot of times the clinicians or our um, medical collaborators come to me and uh, give me a messy data set. I always tell them I'm a statistician, not a magician. It's just a joke, no offensive. Why is that? Because I actually, I feel that statistician is not only works when, when you already obtain the data. Statistician works better if you come to the statistician at your design stage. And I'm here for this, right? And um, we know that um, I think the majority of the study use a simple random sample, uh, which is the most straightforward way, but not the most efficient way. And a lot of people, they use, they want to improve the simple random sample, then they use a stratified sampling. This is a well-known, or some other names, clustering sampling, et cetera. But however, all these sampling, this um, restrictive sampling require prior information. Like you know that your, maybe you have different population among, by gender, so you will have, you sample by female and sample by male. However, what if you don't know this prior information? Then we can use some, some type of the adaptive uh, stratified, which we stratify based on our measured value of this covariate value. And this is called the rank set sampling. Here is the, the sample scheme. For each of the set, we have a R set, usually because we want to rank based on the covariate value and sometimes the covariance is not perfect, then we don't want to have a large R. We all, maybe we only rank five at a time. So the minimum, the second minimum, the third, fourth, and the fifth. So maybe five, two, or three. And then each set, we choose, we, then we, choose, we rank them. So number one, number two, and uh, number M. Um, Oh, no, sorry, uh, and the number R. So, so number one, number two, and number R. And uh, so this is our first cycle. And we repeat this until M times. And the M is usually large, but not too large. Uh, much better than a simple random sample, anyway. And uh, how this one, actually, this set of is actually a, a set of M order statistic the first order st statistic, the second one, the R one. And uh, this is the, actually the distribution of the rank set, the black curve. And uh, if by simple random sampling, we will get this, the red curve. If we sample at an ex extensive large sample size. And, um, but if we sample at a smaller sample size, we may get some sample here some sample here, which is not representing the whole population. But rank set will force you to select sample based on these five different individual population. So we will force him, we get sample here, get sample here, get sample here, get sample here. So this will give us a more representative sample, for sure, because this is a stratified, oh, okay. And here's the, you, I, nobody likes the data, so I just point out this column here, the reduction rate. This is the rate of, oops, this is the rate of the 
how many of the reduction of our MSC, which is the combination of the buyers and the, the variance. So we want smaller buyers and also smaller variance. And this is how much percentage we reduce for the MSC. And this, we can also interpret this reduction rate in terms of the, how much sample size we saved. You see this averaging across, maybe most of them greater than 60%. So this is a lot of, a lot of sample size reduction. And um, here's the more mathematical name. But this is a gen the most important conclusion. We save around 60% of the sample size. This is all under normality. And also I simulate across different dis distributions, the, like the mixture normal, like the exponential and the, a lot for across all different samples because this is a non-parametric approach anyway. So, so it's a similarly have, we have a similar conclusion. Um, and uh, this is a data example I just previously discussed. And uh, here is to density and uh, due to the time. But you can see that uh, maybe it's not clear on this graph. Can you see it on this graph, the green line? A little bit, right? Yeah, but, but actually if, I don't know, the red one actually gets closer to the black, black one is all data, and these are the sample data of 30 and 30. We can see that the red curve captures these, these peaks of the density every time, but the green one sometimes lose the point because it's simple random sample. It don't, doesn't collect everywhere. And we can see here the the relative, the, the, the rank set sample gets closer to the reality and also with smaller variance. Okay, so any questions? Thank you.